We have liftoff later in the programme, Roy's and the beautiful Angus Glens after Blue Hairs with Eagles. It's the launch of the Mauser M12 Impact. Can this lightweight hunting rifle land punches against a tactical 338 at a thousand metres? Yep. We have news, we have Hello Charlie, we have Hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Train well, learn lots, practice hard, hunt easy. Robert, welcome. So how have we ended up here, looking at a bench with a top-end military tactical rifle a really nice sporting rifle and we're going to be comparing them. How's it come about? We sort of fell into this project on the behest of a customer of ours who, who said the rifle is not fit for purpose. So I thought, let's go back to the drawing board, pick up the M12 as it was tested, it was very, very precise and, and see if we can stretch his leg and see if we can compare it to something really unfair and, if, and see if it holds up and see how far we can, we can stretch the legs of this little rifle against a military tactical rifle and see when it, run out, when it runs out of leg. Okay, well, you got the advantage of me slightly on the story, but as far as I understand it, someone's been supplied with an M12, and they then decided that they want to shoot it at very long range, so we're talking 800, 1000 meters plus, is this correct? Yes. Okay, and they came back and said they couldn't dial it far enough. For us, the M12 was never more than an, an affordable Mauser. Yeah, so yeah. we always assumed we and we tested it at factory within mm. the normal remit, out to three, four hundred yards, yeah. as you would do with a hunting rifle. And all of a sudden, you get a phone call from somebody who uh, says it's not fit for purpose. Yeah. All the alarm bells start ringing, and how dare you question our ability to make a good rifle? Yeah. I, so that's that's the first reaction that you get. I know you. I wouldn't say that to you. <laughs> What we obviously didn't think of that somebody would want to take it out to that range because usually when you're thinking those ranges you're thinking yeah. something like this not yeah. that where it was very exciting for me that mauser were willing to respond to a customer's complaint and not only do a fix, but actually are willing to tailor make a rifle to the needs of a specific segment in a specific market. That was exciting. And Miles said, well, if that's the spec that you want, let's build it. Let's see if it's interesting to the customers. And I'm very confident that it will be. My personal moment of pride here. You sleep sounder as a shooter when you know it was you and it couldn't have possibly been the rifle. That is the reason why I personally wanted to prove that rifle is capable of a thousand meters and more. So anything that comes below that, you don't have to worry about it. Mauser will be one of the first companies, I think, to say, look, here's a hunting rifle, buy it from our company. Oh, incidentally, you're going to find you can shoot it at 800, 1,000, maybe 1,200 meters, caliber dependent. They've actually added this rail. This is a prototype rail. What it's effectively doing is changing the scope from being straight over the top of the rifle, and it's actually creating that effect. Effectively, it's bringing the muzzle up so that the rifle, when it's zeroed, is 20 minutes of angle higher in terms of the scope. So you're gaining at least one turn of a turret, sometimes two or three. 
we've got a lot of due diligence to do on a shot like this to be able to be sure of hitting the quarry which is our main objective and then to be reasonably certain of being close or on the target. The temperature is 11 degrees Celsius today. This matters for every one degree Celsius change there's a click in elevation change. Both rifles are going to take a bit of a wind kicking. At 1,090 yards one mile an hour of wind is worth 14 inches to the 308 on the left and about nine inches to the 338 on the right. So if we're just one mile an hour wind out, which is very easy to be, we're going to be either side of the target. But we're going to see, it's going to be a group average thing. Here are the two rounds we're shooting at a thousand meters with, okay? We've got the 338 Lapro Magnum coming out of a seven and a half kilo tactical rifle you can chuck out of a helicopter and run off and fight a war with. We have the 308 shooting a 178 grain match bullet by Hornady. This has turned out to be the best ammunition for this shoot for us. If we were fishing, not shooting, the Mauser would be uh, fishing with light tackle. You know, this is going after a marlin with a 30 pound line, a small hook and a light rod. <laughs> Robert, fancy a shoot. Okay, Robert. Spotting. Okay, I want you to come up five clicks. The anti clockwise five, aim center, spotting. Half a target right at three o'clock. Reload and aim half a target left at nine o'clock, spotting. Hit. Reload. I want you to aim three quarters of a target left at 10 o'clock, spotting. Listen, hit, and one more. Aim nine o'clock, three quarters of a target left, spotting. Hit. <laughs> <laughs> now, you wanted to make a thousand meter stalking rifle, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, you lunatic, you've done it. <laughs> well, it's done everything that we hoped it would. We got it within four shots. We got it onto the target at a thousand meters. Absolutely, absolutely. We tremendous. were on on the third Second, shot, on the third and you shot. hit it three, four, and five. And five. Which I think is consistent. Yes, I think that's consistent, yes. <laughs> well, no, absolutely, absolutely blown over. Just have a little compact sporting rifle and actually be on the target at that and then consistently hit the target at a thousand meters. I don't think we can complain at that. Ah, this is great. It really shows the lottery of long range shooting. It's taken me four rounds to get onto the target with the 338. Now it's held the target well for two rounds and we've actually had boom, boom, two rounds, you know, about, I suppose, eight or nine inches apart. It's astonishing that the mouse is boxing in the same ring, but it is, and it's doing very well. So what are you going to tell your client? Thank you for actually showing us what the rifle is capable of. As I said, we would have never, ever thought of testing it out to that, to that distance. I didn't think it could be done. We did do it and Thanks for showing us the way. Thank you, Robert, and thank you, Andrew. And if you want to find out what kind of hunting rifle you own, well, Andrew has a 60 second challenge for you. Click on the link on the screen to have a look at that film. Now, later in the program, we will reach soaring heights with eagles chasing blue hares in the Angus Glens. First, let's plumb the depths. It's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Big game hunting is booming. Despite the fallout from the shooting of Cecil the Lion in Zimbabwe, the Wall Street Journal says big game hunting has never been more popular. Moose and grizzly bear are top of the hunting pops, with, claims the newspaper, American hunters as keen on fitness and endurance aspects of a trip as the hunting itself. Another sport doing well is fox hunting. Despite Tony Blair's ban, the Countryside Alliance expects more than 250,000 people 
to enjoy the traditional Boxing Day meets in the UK, many of them listed on mfha.org.uk. The Alliance says that the ban is in tatters. A Scottish conservation body has shot 86 red stags and left the majority of the carcasses to rot on the hill. John Muir Trust has been called a delinquent conservation body after carrying out a cull on the Noy Dart Peninsula on the west coast of the Highlands. The European Commission is currently trying to put through stricter controls on the registration and sale of firearms. To register your displeasure, go to bit.ly forward slash EC gun ban, where you will fill out a form pointing out problems, especially with the ban on semi-automatic rifles, five-year limits on gun licences and the ban on pistol ammunition, none of which would have stopped the Paris terror attacks. And finally, an Australian anti will miss the beginning of the duck shooting season because of a court appearance. Veteran campaigner Laurie Levy will miss his first season opening for 30 years after being banned from wetlands for six months. He pleaded guilty to obstructing a game officer by grabbing his boat. In his place, however, will be Animals Australia director Lynn White. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts and happy Christmas. Thank you, David, full of festive cheer there. Now let's see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie. Have a very Merry Christmas. Hello Charlie. This is Adalberto from Spain. I'm hunting magpies today with my hybrid of peregrine falcon and aplomado falcon. And now we are having a rest in this beautiful morning. Hello Charlie, Robin here from the Isle of Mull. Looks like Mike spoiled Christmas. Happy New Year to everyone. Congratulations to Anita and Alan and their new baby boy. What could be better? Feet up on the seat. Watching me old mate Charlie on the telly. Where are you Charlie? There's Paul. Come on Charlie. Hello Charlie. How you doing? Ooh, love you too Charlie. Hi Charlie. It's Steve from Kent. Um, I'm in Essex today, trying to bag myself a goose for Christmas. My wife told me last week that there's 60 odd pounds in the high street. Hello Charlie, just been um, visiting with my dad again. Hello Charlie, I'm out here in the lovely Kilhone estate with your very own Kayapri. Along with our very own Princess Eddie. Me and Alex here have been shooting pheasants in Somerset. Hello Charlie, no fox shooting this week, but I'm in the mountains of North Thailand. Absolutely beautiful. Hello Charlie, this is uh, Chief from Norfolk, I've been out on the rats this evening, I only picked three, which is a bit disappointing considering I've used um, two 10 shot mags, but am I going to crawl through a hedge to find rats? No I'm not. <laughs> Keep up the good work Charlie, love the show. That's it, please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those, please keep them coming in 2016. Now Roy Lupton feels probably most at home with his eagles and for the first time we're able to join him for a ding dong merrily on the uplands of the Angus Glens in Scotland after Blue Hares. The mountain hare is the natural prey of the golden eagle. Also known as blue hares, they're fast and agile, but on this Scottish estate the healthy population needs to be more wily than normal because Roy and his friends are here hunting. They're flying two golden eagles, a Benelli's eagle, two fairy tales and a goshawk. All will take in turns to fly the hares. But before we head off to a cloud-covered hill, the birds need to be dried off and weighed in. The 
Yesterday it was a different story. Snow covered the tops around the glen and in the stunning scenery the birds punched through the air. Sometimes the hares win the day and sometimes the birds find their prey. With the snow gone and the cloud lifting, the falconers head up to the top of the moor. So what's the plan, Roy? Today is, is my main passion, um, and that's we're going to be flying the Golden Eagles on mountain hares. It's something that we've done for 20 years. Uh, we'll be taking my old boy out a little bit later on. That's my old eagle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We'll be taking my old eagle out a little bit later on and he specialises in wasting up and going up onto the, the, uh, the updrafts on the side of the mountains and then stooping into the hares. Because we've got the mist in we're going to start off with fist flights so we're going to be working the dogs through. We've also got another selection of birds to fly as well so we've got a couple of fruit tails out with us and we've got a Benelli's eagle as well so fingers crossed we should do quite well because there's a, a good number of hares here so yeah, I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. With the old boy out of harm's way, it's time for everyone to work the hill. The falconer with the chance to slip their bird stands higher. The beaters shout hare if one runs. Sometimes the dogs will hold point, like Boo here. Otherwise it's all systems go when the hair breaks cover. No flight is the same. The hair sometimes finds cover or a hole to escape the talons, but all the birds are flying well. It's really interesting because you come up to a, a highland estate and you find the, the blue hairs up here. And they've definitely got a few more manoeuvres where they're being hunted by wild goldies. That, that's my excuse anyway. Um, whereas if you go onto some estates that haven't got the goldies predating on them so much, yeah, they are a bit easier. The first hair of the day falls to Baby, Roy's youngest goldie. Oh, superb, well done mate. Oh, he's a good boy. So, oh, first one in the bag for today. We won't give him too much on this hair because we're hopefully going to catch a few or get a few more in the bag. We're not going to be able to feed all the people in the lodge with what we've got, so... Hopefully some of the other guys will be getting a bit more success as well. There you go. So we'll just give him a little bit of lung. Just got to get the chick out. And then trade up. There's a good boy. Excellent. I'm just hoping this weather is going to clear. Because if it does, we are in an absolutely phenomenal place. We've got a massive bowl here and we've got some really nice big banks of heather and if we can get the eagles up and waiting on it really is just breathtaking. It gets the hairs standing up on the back of my neck every time even after 20 years. Roy's old boy Cappy hunts in a different way waiting on. The weather isn't going to clear sufficiently today but Roy explains his technique of dropping like a stone and throwing in a dummy move before striking. Really the eagle just learns that when he's working with you, you're going to be putting the hairs up so he'll follow you and sometimes I can have him up there for half an hour, sometimes longer and he'll follow a ridge line along as long as he's got the wind in his favour and he'll be up there just waiting for us to flush hairs, waiting for us to flush the hairs or waiting for the dogs to flush the hairs. When the hairs are away then we shout, the shout is given and the eagle comes stooping down. Because Cappy's been doing it for just over 20 years now, he's obviously mastered the technique very well and where you'll get a young eagle coming in, all guns blazing, with a, a complete teardrop all the way to the ground, gunning into the ground, very often missing the hair. What he'll do is he'll, he'll come stooping in, very often he'll put in a dummy pass, and with the wind he'll flick up again. The hare thinks that the danger has passed and then chooses his path to run, continuing up the hill, and then Cappy will just reposition himself and uh, normally administer the coup de grace quite quickly. The one thing that you've got to have with an eagle when they're waiting on 
is a, a very good recall. Obviously we're flying in areas where there may be wild golden eagles passing over and a wild golden eagle will try and push your eagle out of their territory. So it's just a, a shout and uh, down he'll come to the fist. Back to Armour and Sean Spinelli's misses a sitter. It is a bit unfair, but the hare is either asking for trouble or is confident it can avoid the incoming danger. The last successful flight of the day is Roy's fairy tale, flown by James. Incredible mid-air acrobatics means it recovers and strikes the hare. Looks like there will be food on the table this evening. Back at the ranch, the old boy, Cappy, gets his grub. Unfortunately, the old chap didn't get a chance to come out, so we'll have to just bowl feed him for the, uh, the evening. I hope we've got better weather tomorrow. Now, unfortunately, because we had the fog and mist in, well, proper scotch mist in today, um, there's no way we could have him waiting on and going up because uh, they do get disorientated in that sort of environment. So we'll have to beat one for another day. Fingers crossed. God, the gods will look down on us and give us some good weather, and we'll uh, we'll get some nice sunny afternoons and some good winds. Roy has enjoyed an incredible few days in the Angus Glens. Good company, good hair numbers, and good sport. What a wonderful place! Right, if over Christmas you're thinking to yourself, well, which shows shall I go to in 2016? The first one off the box is the British Shooting Show. From Stoneley in Warwickshire to the rest of the world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. The big hunting film of the week comes from Russia. Hunting Hash 48 Collective Hunt 3 Moose is in Russian, but has good English subtitles and is, as the title suggests, about a moose hunt. Jaeger Lumio sounds like a Harry Potter spell, but is in this case the maker of a film that I cannot pronounce about elk hunting in Finland. What they call moose in Russia and America and elk in Scandinavia is different to what they call elk in America and, in this case, Canada. Every couple of months, an avid hunter puts up a half-hour show, and this is his new one, a late summer elk hunting camp with friends in British Columbia. MFK stands for Made for Killing, which may be more American than English, but Coyote Hunting Redemption MFK Season 4 Episode 13 is an interesting film with MFK Game Calls' is Tori guiding client Jason Mortimer on a coyote hunt. On the British Predator front, Rob Crampton is back with a long night foxing in South Yorkshire. He is out with Liam Marsh and fellow foxer Mark. Halali Magazine is probably the only hunting magazine in the world that truly understands hunting filmmaking. In this film, Ilka Dawn is after Roe in the south of France with one of our favourite hunting outfitters, Pierre-Jean Lacombe. And in this film, the excellent Dreis Pross rounds up his North German hunting experiences from November and December 2015 with driven big game, geese and duck shooting and trapping. And finally, Kane is a landowner in the United States who so gets into his deer he gives them names. This is the hunt for Chaz, an animal he's been following on trail cams since 2013. And it is also also a film about Kane going hunting with his dad. Aww. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you don't like those, how about this? It's the last Schools Challenge TV of the year, and indeed the last Schools Challenge TV on Field Sports Channel. And you will find out which lucky under 21 wins the 10th anniversary car. The biggest prize for a young shot in the history of clay shooting. Click on the link on the screen for that one. Or you can click to go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube or even pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain out, 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and happy Christmas.